This has got to be probably the world's most unique football stadium. It's got to be the only football stadium in the world. Maybe there's one or two others that I'm unaware of, but it's got to be one of the, if not the only one, which has two football teams play in it that play in two completely different countries' league systems, two completely different football associations. This is an incredible story about an abandoned stadium that I'm going to be going to see in. Um, I absolutely love abandoned stadiums. I've made a lot of videos, are countless ones that I can sort of think about now. I've made them in Scotland, I've made them in England, I've even made one in Portugal. There's one in Porto, so check out my abandoned stadium playlist after this. Um, I'll leave like a link to it at the end or whatever. Um, but yeah, there is an incredible abandoned stadium with an interesting backstory, which actually means that there is now a team, the team that used to play in the abandoned stadium, that play here. The team that played in the abandoned stadium that now play here are called Institute FC. They play in Northern Ireland's football league system but the team that actually owns this stadium are from the northern are actually in northern ireland but they play in the league of ireland the republic of ireland's league system it gets a little bit complicated we're going to be getting into all the facts a little bit later in this video but yeah this is the home of derry city fc who are from northern ireland but play in the republic of ireland's league and the stadium is also home to a team that play in northern ireland's league as well like i say it's it really really confusing please hit that like button please subscribe if you're new and i'll see you down at the abandoned Stadium in just a second. Quite fitting, really, that it starts to rain as soon as I get to the abandoned stadium, which is right there. Wow, this looks like a good one. So, while I look for a way into the abandoned stadium, I'll give you a little bit of context about the team, Institute FC. What a name that is, by the way. The Presbyterian Working Men's Institute. Another football team is known as Institute FC. I think that is actually a YMCA up there. So I do believe that may be a part of it. I'm not sure. Wow, it's completely open. This is brilliant. This is fantastic. Usually when you come to abandoned stadiums, they're all boarded off and there's CCTV and you're not able to get in there. But I think we'll get some fantastic access to this. Just look at this. Here we go, look. It's the home entrance, look, there's the Northern Irish Football Association badge, UEFA's 10 point plan. I bet UEFA didn't know that this was gonna happen to the home of Institute FC. Wow, look, they were even intermediate cup winners in 2016. Just look at this place now, this is incredible. This is one of the best abandoned stadiums I think I've ever been to. Look at the trees and stuff in the back there. And look at where the pitch once was. I mean, there's grass in there that is taller than me. And from what I can work out, everything of note has been ripped out. But look, this is where a darts board would have once been. Obviously, the board itself has been removed. But look, this is where this could have maybe been like a little supporters bar or something where people would have come and play darts. All that's left is this creepy chair in this weird little position here. There's plug sockets, wires have been ripped out, lights have been ripped out does seem to me, like I say, everything I've noticed is gone. There's even this old rug on the floor. Absolutely mad stuff. So they have a history that goes back to the 1800s, but the official club of Institute FC, there was a few name changes and stuff like that in its very earliest days, but I do believe the club that is sort of now around today was formed around the around 1905. That's the sort of official start date of this club, although like I say, there was more um, there was a sort of like other version of the club before that, like a different name, but Institute FC as it was known, 1905. And that incidentally makes them older than the more successful in inverted commas, Derry City FC, who they now ground share with, a sort of bigger club who actually are playing in Europe. Um, 
in a couple of days of Derry City FC. They're playing against Riga in the Conference League qualifier early round, I think. Um, they currently share with this team who now don't have a stadium of their own. They currently play in the second tier of the Northern Irish Football League system, so the Championship. So this team here, they used to play here as a Championship level stadium, really. Oh, they've played in the Prem a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, nowadays they are a Championship team, but they share with... So they play in the Championship of the Northern Irish League system, but they share with a team who play in the Premiership of the League system of the Republic of Ireland. From what I can work out, they've never won the top tier of Northern Irish football, and they've never won the top tier cup either. They've not won any of the big major, major competitions, but they have won the second tier before. So they are a like, fairly decent sized club in terms of like Northern Irish football. But it's just mad to think that thousands would have once come and watched the championship team play here maybe they won the championship when they were playing here i mean they probably did didn't they jesus look at this place now crazy absolutely unbelievable this is up there with one of the best abandoned stadiums i've ever ever seen look at this is this like an old maybe boardroom of some kind like this is a little disconnected building it says player and officials maybe this is a a changing room oh my god yeah it must be a changing room look at that there's like tiles in the back there that make me think it was maybe a maybe a changing room of some kind a bathroom look at that the roof is just completely caved in looks like there's maybe been a fire in this section they look like there was a fire out there as well in like one of the stands maybe people have come in and burnt stuff um like since it became abandoned but Oh, this is an absolute mad one. It really, really is. I mean, look, yeah, look at the roof up here, really. This looks like it's been burnt, but the actual reason for the abandonment was flooding. I'll get onto the abandonment a little bit later in the video. I want to have a look around first, but see how it looks like it's all been burnt? It's all black and charred. Look at that, the old physio table. This would have been the old, uh, the old physio room where players from the past would have come and got their massages. Oh my god, look at this, this seat looks like it's been burnt out. That's what I was saying, it looks like there's been like a fire in this part here, but this looks potentially maybe like a bit of a media room. Look at that, that little desk there makes me think that maybe this is where like, they would have uh, they would have had the stadium announcer potentially. Um, he gets a great view of, of everything from here. But yeah, this maybe makes me think, look, there's wires in there as well. Probably where the stadium announcer would have been. It's a real shame what happened here because it seems like a really, really nice, well put together ground. There was that little section out the front where players and officials would have come and obviously got their massages after the games, etc., from the physio. And then you got this wonderful big stand that overlooks the pitch. And then three stands around there. There aren't too many grounds within Northern Ireland, even some of the top tier that I went to that didn't even have four stands in like a complete stadium like this. There were some that had three and stuff, but look, even the seats down there are really well kept. They've still kept their color of blue really, really well. And look, just to prove the facilities that they once had here, look, this seems to be like a, a lift for disabled people. And then right here, it seems as if there was a disabled toilet. You can see the rails, I believe this would have been a toilet looking at some of the things that are on the floor there. And then actually thinking about it, these would have probably been disabled seating. You got a fantastic view of the pitch from here. So again, fantastic facilities at this place completely ruined one year by flooding, which is why it's no longer here. But we'll get into that in just a second. Right, let's see if we can do a lap of the stadium and uh, get, a, get a view of like the other stands and stuff. I love these, honestly. These places are so intriguing to me. It was only five years ago, less than five years ago actually, about four years and 
10, 11 months or something like that, I think, that this place, the events that took place at this place are why it is like this now. So yeah, around five years it's taken to get from a vibrant stadium of maybe like a yo-yo team going up and down between the Premiership and the Championship just to become like this. It is absolutely insane how that quickly nature can just take over again. We saw those buildings around the other side there, those ones that are sort of burnt down. There are so many like plants and stuff just grown out of them already. I mean, to be fair, the seats genuinely look better than in some stadiums that are still going to this day. I mean, look at that seat there. Maybe it's they've not been used so much that they actually look so good, but they've really seemed to retain their their colour a lot, which is incredible. But yeah, it was actually flooding um, within the area that um, meant that this couldn't be used anymore. Um, oh, bloody hell. I'm on edge. It was just a pigeon. I'm completely on edge. <laughs> yeah, it was flooding, which is why it can't be used anymore. And apparently the the floods were so high on the pitch, they were like five foot high. I'm not much taller than five foot, so it would have been maybe like up to here on me. And then the flooding in the changing room areas were seven foot high. That's what I've read online, seven foot high. That is a huge amount of flooding for this area. Um, and it was a temporary solution for them to move ground um, to Derry now, but also they went to a different one um, before they actually moved to Derry. Um, another sort of smaller team, I believe. But um, yeah, that was all just a temporary solution for them to see if they could rejuvenate this place, which obviously they couldn't. And I've read that there are still plans to maybe move to a stadium of their own. Guys, let me know in the comment section below. It's always hard to find this information out, but any Institute fans out there, any fans of um, Irish and Northern Irish football, let me know what the plans are for this club. Because right now, this place is going to need a lot of work. Why can't this place be redone? I mean, they've got a lot of the infrastructure here already. Rather than build a new one, can't they come in, get rid of all the, get rid of all the guff, connect the electricity back up and get it back up and running. Oh my God, look at these turnstiles as well. Even the turnstiles seem kind of modern. Look at this, they don't have those like old school style like turnstiles anymore. From what I read online as well, like again, I showed you the disabled facilities around there. I showed you the disabled facilities in that stand over there. And they've done a lot of work to improve the stadium. They added new stands, they added new seats, they added disabled facilities. It looks like they've got good turnstiles as well and like all these sort of more modern touches and stuff. Which is even more of a shame of what happened to it in, in a way. It's the only time you'll ever see me going in the female toilets. That sink's been smashed to pieces. Here is one of the toilets around here. Oh, look at the gents. I've actually seen the gents worse at Wembley. When Wembley's full and they don't have the urinals and it's just the toilets, I've genuinely, genuinely seen it worse than that. Bloody hell, look at it around here. I mean, less than five years and it gets like this. Absolutely crazy stuff, isn't it? Five years ago, it would have been a just your standard stadium and you'd be able to walk through here, but Look at that, this is absolutely mad. And it's pissing down. Let me get in round into the stand and get some cover. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching who have seen football here. Are you an Institute fan? Are you a fan of a team that was an away team here once upon a time? If you are, let me know your favorite memories from this place. What was the stadium like before it became abandoned? I think it's pretty nice. Obviously not right now, but from what I can work out, obviously what I've spoken about, the seats, the facilities, even this part here, like a terrace section. Was this the away stand maybe? I take it that stand over there, the kind of bigger mainer one was for home, was for home, uh, home fans. Was this for away fans? If it was, if you're an away fan, what was it like? Have you been here with your mates, your family? Um, what was the ground like? Did it have a good atmosphere? What about the team, were they any good? I know they've won a couple of trophies, like we say the championship or whatever, but how were they seen in terms of Northern Irish football? I just always think of the fans who would have uh, who would have come and watched games at these places when they come to these abandoned stadiums. The families, the friends, the kids, the adults, the celebrations for the goals, the penalties, the referees, the managers, who have all sort of helped bring this football club on. 
wonder what they and what you guys think about this place now. Oh, Christ, here we go. I've completed the, uh, the set of stands now. Oh, look, here we go, look. This stand is dedicated to the memory of Billy Key for services to Institute Football Club. This is the Billy Key stand. This is a new stand that they built here. I've read about it online. I think £800,000 was pumped into making this place um, sort of improved um, just a few years before before the flooding, which is really, really sad. I obviously spent all that money uh, building it up or whatever, and then it got completely ruined. I mean, look at all the sponsors that are still on here from years gone by. Dansk Bank, the sponsors of the league there, of course. And there's something super, super fascinating to me about abandoned stadiums. I mean, I've made a lot of videos about them before. Uh, some of my favourites, of course, Kafkin Park's got to be up there. That's an absolute classic. Um, SC Salgueros in Porto. That one's amazing. You've got to check that video out. Zidane actually played against that team. And now their stand uh, stadium lays abandoned. That was when he still was a youngster and playing in France. That was SC Salgueros. Uh, from Porto, really, really cool abandoned stadium, that one. There's Ellsbury in my hometown down in England. Weirdly enough, it's almost like I was born to uh, investigate these abandoned stadiums. There's one in my hometown. Uh, East Stirlingshire have a cool one. Um, there's probably a few that I'm missing out, but I absolutely love them. Yeah, like I say, I always just think of the, the friends, the families and all that, and the just football fans who would have uh, come and enjoyed coming to this stadium down the years that no longer can anymore and have to make the trip. Into, into Derry a little bit further to be able to go and watch their team play now. I will leave a card to my abandoned playlist at the end of this video. Um, so do make sure you check that out. Like I say, I've made tons of abandoned vids before and I'm probably not even, I'm definitely not remembering all of them. Um, but yeah, I really, really do like to explore them. They are absolutely fascinating, especially when you look into the backstories of some of them, why some of them were abandoned. Kafkin Park was abandoned because the team folded, whereas this was abandoned here because of flooding. So there's loads of different stuff like that. Ellsbury, they were abandoned because the land got sold to developers and they never developed anything on it. So there's all these different reasons of to why stadiums get abandoned or whatever. And uh, and this one's just absolutely mad. It's really sad because the club's still about. They haven't got home anymore. They haven't for five years now. And it's just, uh, just been left to rot like this. Hang on, let me get rid of some of the rain there for you. It's just been left to rot like this, sadly. Absolutely nuts, isn't it? I really, really do appreciate you watching this video. Absolutely crazy scenes in here. Um, as sad as these stories are, um, I really do like to explore these abandoned stadiums. Opportunity for me to pump out some content, um, especially when they're as open as this one are. Absolutely fantastic. Please do hit that like button. Please, please do subscribe if you're new as well. For more abandoned stadium videos, there'll be more um, that I haven't yet come across. Um, so please do drop them in the comment section below and do check out that abandoned playlist that I just spoke about. I'll leave some videos on screen. One of the things that you can click on now will be that playlist with all my abandoned stadium videos. So do do make sure you check that out. I'd really, really appreciate it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.